Hi my brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope you've been doing well. So this is kind of part two from the video that I've just previously released. They are sort of different with different messages but they still do flow in with each other and I did feel that I needed to do them separate for you. And so if you haven't watched the first one go and have a listen to it but we'll just go continue with this word now. Just remember with every prophetic word that you hear Please take it before the Lord Jesus and just ask the Holy Spirit to lead you in all truth and understanding because he's the one who will confirm things for you. Yeah, just remember to believe in no man or woman. It's for each and every one of us to go and hear from the Lord for our own journeys and for our own lives. And words of prophecy, teaching and preaching, all of that is to be supplementary to our walk with the Lord and not to make up our entire walk. So we're not to be dependent on these sort of things but we are to be dependent on the Lord and His Word, and then the teachings and preachings and prophetic words are an adjunct to that. And so the Lord took me to Esther. And so I'm going to read for us Esther chapter 8 and chapter 9, basically um, tell you what the Lord has said to me. And I'm reading out of the NIV. That same day, King Xerxes gave Queen Esther the estate of Haman, the enemy of the Jews, and Mordecai came into the presence of the king, for Esther had told how he was related to her. The king took off his signet ring, which he had reclaimed from Haman, and presented it to Mordecai, and Esther appointed him over Haman's estate. Esther again pleaded with the king, falling at his feet and weeping. She begged him to put an end to the evil plan of Haman the Agite, which he had devised against the Jews. Then the king extended the gold scepter to Esther, and she arose and stood before him. If it pleases the king, she said, and if he regards me with favor and think it is the right thing to do, and if he is pleased with me, let an order be written, overruling the dispatches that Haman's son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, devised and wrote to destroy the Jews in all the king's provinces. For how can I bear to see disaster fall on my people? How can I bear to see the destruction of my family? King Xerxes replied to Queen Esther and to Mordecai the Jew, Because Haman attacked the Jews, I have given his estate to Esther, and they have hanged him on the gallows. Now write another decree in the king's name on behalf of the Jews as seems best to you, and seal it with the king's signet ring. For no document written in the king's name and sealed with this ring can be revoked. At once the royal secretaries were summoned. On the twenty-third day of the third month, the month of Sivan, they wrote out all Mordecai's orders to the Jews and to the satraps, governors and nobles of the hundred and twenty-seven provinces, stretching from India to Kush. These orders were written in the script of each province and the language of each people, and also to the Jews, their own transcript and language. Mordecai wrote in the name of King Xerxes, sealed with dispatches with the king's signet ring, and sent them by mounted couriers who rode fast horses, especially bred for the king. The king's edict granted the Jews in every city the right to assemble and protect themselves, to destroy, kill, and annihilate any armed forces of any nationality or province that might attack them and their women and children, and to plunder the property of their enemies. The day appointed for the Jews to do this in all the provinces of King Xerxes was the thirteenth day of the twelfth month of the month of Adar. A copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as law in every province and made known to the people of every nationality, so that the Jews would be ready on the day to avenge themselves on their enemies. The couriers riding the royal horses raced out, spurred on by the king's command, and the edict was also issued in the citadel of Susha. Mordecai left the king's presence, wearing royal garments of blue and white, a large crown of gold and purple robe of fine linen. And the city of Susa held a joyous celebration. For the Jews it was a time of happiness, joy, gladness and honor. In every province and in every city, wherever the edict of the king went, there was joy and gladness amongst the Jews with feasting and celebrating. And many people of other nationalities became Jews because fear of the Jews seized them. On the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, the month of Adar, the edict commanded by the king was to be carried out. On this day, the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them. 
But now the tables were turned, and the Jews got the upper hand over those who hated them. The Jews assembled in the cities in all the provinces of King Xerxes to attack those seeking their destruction. No one could stand against them, because the people of all the other nationalities were afraid of them. And all the nobles of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and the king's administrators helped the Jews, because the fear of Mordecai had seized them. Mordecai was prominent in the palace. His reputation spread throughout the provinces, and he became more and more powerful. The Jews struck down all their enemies with the sword, killing and destroying them, and they did what they pleased to those who hated them in the citadel of Susa. The Jews killed and destroyed 500 men. And continuing from verse 13, If it pleases the king, Esther answered, Give the Jews in Susa permission to carry out this day's edict tomorrow also, and let Haman's ten sons be hanged on the gallows. So the king commanded that this be done. An edict was issued in Susa, and they hanged the ten sons of Haman. The Jews in Susa came together on the, th on the th 14th day of the month of Adar, and they put to death in Susa 300 men, but they did not lay their hands on the plunder. Meanwhile, the remainder of the Jews who were in the king's provinces also assembled to protect themselves and get relief from their enemies. They killed 75,000 of them, but did not lay their hands on the plunder. This happened on the 13th day of Adar, and on the 14th day they rested and made it a day of feasting and joy. So I know it's a lot that I read again, but um, just as in the previous video, I felt the Lord said to me that I needed to read these words. And also go and read these in your own time. I'll put down the, um, the verses in the description box for you. So as I was sitting with the Lord, he started speaking to me about what he was saying in that. And it's actually quite exciting and empowering. It sort of flows with a similar word that the Lord had me release a while ago about the forerunners. Where those who have been faithful and forerunning for the Lord... They were kind of like the Levites standing in the Jordan River holding up the ark so that the rest of the Israelites could have crossed over the Jordan to go to the promised land. As I was sitting with the Lord, he just started explaining to me. So what has been happening is you, the Lord has chosen certain ones as he does and he's given them a call and they've responded to it. His faithful ones who have been leaving everything for the Lord, following in obedience, building as the Lord has asked them to build and so forth. And the Lord has given them decrees and instructions to carry out. While everything else was been going on in the world, they were actually preparing the body of Christ to help them to cross over into this new era, into this new place, with their prayers, with their decrees, with their worship and all of that. They were basically helping the Lord on this earth to cause that shift from happening. But a lot of them have become a bit discouraged as well. And um, because they, they kind of have made these decrees, they've kind of made these prayers, but they haven't really seen the results. And the Lord just wants me to encourage you that just like with um, this with Esther, that there isn't a point of time. They issued the decrees, but then it was given to swift horses to be carried out. And then the decrees were there on time for the point of time when it was ready for it. So just bear in mind that your works, your efforts, all of that has not been for nothing. All right, your decrees and all of that, it's just being carried with the horses for the point of time of the Lord to establish it and carry it out. So take heart in that and celebrate in that. And so what the Lord was also showing with this word is that just like with Haman, where he made a decree, it's like the enemy, um, Satan just coming and making a lot of darkness, a lot of havoc, a lot of destruction in the earth at the present time. And it's sort of like with, with Haman, with the decree, the Jews got very discouraged. They got very fearful and they were very distraught about that decree because they felt like their lives were being ruined, like what's happening. And they really felt like they didn't have any chance. And similar with the body of Christ, with everything happening around the world, a lot of the Christians have been really, really oppressed by um by what Satan has been doing in the earth and they've been feeling fearful, they've been feeling unprotected, they've been feeling what is happening, like we can't even defend ourselves anymore. 
And so what the Lord is saying is there has been a new decree issued and it is time for us to stand up because we have permission as the Lord has already given us that authority in Jesus to stand up and take back what the enemy has stolen. And the Lord is reminding us of that, that we do have that power and authority, that he has issued us the decree that we don't need to have the enemy come against us and leaving us defenseless. The Lord has given us the tools and the keys to combat the enemy. We have the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. God has given us the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the evil one, that nothing shall in any way harm us. He's given us his word, which is the double-edged sword, able to divide bone and marrow, soul and spirit, and it is the attitude of the heart. And the Lord has given us praise, which in Psalm 149 you will find is also a double-edged sword. The Lord has given us our tools and our keys to use against the enemy. Whatever we bound on earth is bound in heaven. But because of that edict or decree from the enemy in the earth, everyone has been quite distraught and just been looking at what the enemy has been doing and none of the children of God are actually equipping themselves and reading and fighting the enemy. And it's just like this decree is with the Jews. Once they got that word from, wow, we can actually protect ourselves. We can actually stand against this. We can fight for our family. We can fight for our nation. We can fight for our city. This is what the Lord is saying to the church is wake up. You have the decree. You have the permission to take the ground from the enemy. But each and every one of you needs to pick up your sword, just like the Jews did. As soon as they got that decree, they knew that they can actually take back what the enemy has stolen or trying to steal from them. And then what happened? The tables were turned. They actually annihilated the enemy more. And the fear came into the enemy camp. It's the same with us. Jesus has the highest authority and power. And he has given that to us. He is stronger than Satan. He's already won the war. And so when we together as a body of Christ stand up, each one takes his sword, fights for his family, for his nation, for his city, praying, seeking the Lord, we will throw that enemy off. It's time to wake up. Okay, we don't have to live this way. If the church stands together, and I'm not talking about denominations, I'm talking about the body of Christ. Okay, we are all brothers and sisters in this. Each and every one of us needs to fight for his family, for his city, for his nation. Don't let that enemy mess with you. You're a child of God, loved by him, clothed in Jesus' righteousness. Shut any open and closed, closed doors that are open in your life from the enemy. Work with the Lord. Get rid of habitual sins. Get rid of those worldly ways. Because it does open doors for the enemy to come in and torment you and leave you defenseless. Seek the Lord. Come close to him. He will build you up. He will establish you. Know that you are a son and daughter of God. It, God is not a respecter of persons. Okay? I'm not more important than you are. The next person is not more important than you are. We are all sons and daughters of God called for such a time as this to rise up. We need to take territories. We need to take ground. Pray. Worship. Seek the Lord. Bring the shift because we have that authority and permission in Jesus' name. Decree the word of God over your situations. Decree the word of God over your nation. Decree the word of God over your city and watch the Lord do amazing works. God asks us to partner with him in this earth. So let's do that because he wants us to do that. Let me pray for you. Daddy God, Lord, I thank you so much for your revelation words, Lord, for this video and the previous one as well. I thank you, my God, that you give us that authority, my Lord Jesus, to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the evil one. I thank you, my God, that even though, Lord, things are hard and that we will face trials and sufferings in this life, exactly like your word said, I thank you, my God, that we can still stay in that place of peace and of love and of joy as we seek your heart, Lord, and as we remain in that intimacy with you. I thank you that the safest place we can be, Lord, during these times is close to your chest because then we can hear for our own lives, Lord, and we can hear for what you want us to do. We thank you, Lord, that you are the author and finisher of our faith and that you are our provider, my King and my God. And Daddy God, I come in the name of Jesus and 
I ask my Lord that you would just bring greater revelation to each and every brother and sister of mine, Lord, that might be slumbering, that might be in complacency. And Daddy God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just help them, my Lord, to see your heart, to see truth, Lord, to see that you are the only way and that there is no other way to live than to live in your presence each and every day. I ask my God in the name of Jesus that you would stir them onto you, that you give them such a desire and a heart and a passion to want to read your word and want to walk in that beautiful relationship with you, hearing your voice each day. Daddy God, give them greater eyes to see you, greater ears to hear you, greater heart of revelation and understanding to hear from you, my God. I pray, Lord, that you would come and shut and close any gates of hell over in their lives and that you'd show them, Lord, any mixtures and complacencies that they need to repent of and that you'll lead and guide them in that. I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you might count them worthy of the calling that you've given them. I ask for them for mercy for those, my Lord, who have unrepented sins in their lives. My King, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help us to stand together, Lord, and awaken from our slumber, my God and my King. We love you, my Lord. You're amazing. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, have a wonderful day. God bless you.